Today, let me talk about Katia MBAC ecosystem, the overview, not only of the ecosystem, but of the modeling of ecosystem using Katia magic and how that can be applied for the user client engagements. And mostly we'll talk about cyber MBAC ecosystem in this session. I'm Solus Pavelkis. We'll talk about Katia magic MBAC ecosystem which is in the last few years grew quite significantly. We had this model uh, presented at uh, MBAC Symposium uh, maybe five, four years ago. And now we can see that there is a lot of partners and uh, a lot of integrations. Key MBAC ecosystem adoption use cases. And then we'll talk about architecture of MBAC electrical via harness engineering end to end, how we can apply the same modeling method to, to identify it and present quite clear manner. And then we'll live session demonstrate client engagement method. I, there will be a lot of demos here. So please uh, let me demonstrate how everything works. So first of all, uh, the SOS systems uh, engineering uh, systems engineering ecosystem. So those are not all products of the SOS system here, but uh, those are the maybe the most representative in each section uh, uh, representing uh, system engineering related uh, uh, tasks and uh, uh, being part of the workflow useful for system engineering. So here we have project management and analysis dashboards. So also we put here triagrams that you would be uh, for you would be easier to find them. So project intelligence consumer, right? For dashboards, project management uh, manager as part of Anovia DPM. Uh, then we have uh, variability, change impact, defect management. So product architecture for PLE, product line engineering, right? Feature model, future configuration model, then collaborative industry innovator. Then we have requirements management, uh, as you know, TRM, right? Uh, synchronizing with uh, and uh, tracing requirements, parameterized requirements. Then we have requirement simulation, stimulus, as you know. Here we have triagram integrates with many products. Uh, also through FMU. Then we have for the requirements um, analysis. Then we have requirements. Uh, uh, then we have traceability reporting impact analysis. So we have uh, traceability, which delivers configuration management traceability, which models we are tracing, uh, which versions of the models, then specific traceability, which we can uh, create uh, and we can also recognize through patterns. And also we can get uh, here ability to see change impact uh, when uh, uh, link data is changed we see the suspect links then system architecture katia magic then we have uh, uh, in sysml uh, but also uml enterprise architecture right uh, with uif uh, leading enterprise architecture framework for dod and system leading system modeling language in general then the systems behavior modeling, Daimola, Daimola on the platform, DBM, which again provides that multidisciplinary, multi-physics simulation. Then uh, we have design disciplines uh, and multiple design disciplines participate quite closely with system engineering. So mechanical, electrical, right? So we identified a couple of them, uh, system software product engineer, which actually now integrates and generates the code and FMU and RxML. And then we have architectural system design, uh, electrical system design, which provides the electrical schematics. Then we have system reliability and safety, like system failure analysis, which includes FMEA risk, and that's here triagram, and then system safety designer, which uh, includes FTA. Those mostly would apply for the design level and requirements level safety analysis. But uh, if you talk about uh, system architecture, safety and reliability analysis, likely you would do it together with the system model. So it will be built in on top of the SSML, uh, FTA and FMEA and risk management. Uh, and then we have, uh, without doubt, validation, verification, test manager, VRP uh, role where we will be able and we are able to include model 
uh, which we are testing. We can uh, do test cases. We can execute those test cases. We can describe uh, how we will execute manually, or we can launch process composer simulate uh, in the analysis mode models as it should be. If models are executed, uh, one of the big cases that is through verification and verification is a very big part of the system engineering and is very useful. So as you can see here, verification, dashboarding and many other things are going hand in hand with the system engineering and actually is part of system engineering. Um, uh, I mean, going hand in hand with system modeling is part of system engineering and allows us to to give additional value to manage the data in single uh, in single platform. Now uh, let's go to the CATIA Magic and the source systems integrations. Those are quite recent integrations, which we identified and created um, uh, by create uh, R and D. You know, in the last few years, as an effort to integrate CATIA Magic with 3D Experience platform. And here you can see. For the experience apps, we can see external apps for free, but still the saw apps. We can see Katia Magic, where we have Fridge Client, Katia Magic, which has module software architect, module cyber systems engineer, Magic Cyber Magic Systems of Systems Architect. Then we have plugins like Magic Alpha Analyst, Magic Model Analyst, like simulation side, right? Magic Real-Time Communication Designer, which is DDS, right? Um, Export and then we have Daimolo here as one of the uh, external apps. Also here we have DBM right on the platform Daimolo. And then we have server side uh, for Katia Magic Magic Collaboration Studio, which includes Teamwork Cloud, includes collaboration, camera collaborator to publish models on web, and server side simulation. And here we have also external uh, things like database dialects, which we support to generate. Um, SQL and uh, reverse engineer. We support also code generation and reverse of those languages. And uh, also we have uh, legends here, which allows us to filter this architecture. Because what we see here, it's a very convenient uh, view to the whole architecture, even it's a very small subset of all the integrations just uh, oriented to the uh, 3D experience platform, uh, external apps uh, by the SO and CATIA Magic integrations. But we already see that there is quite a lot of uh, useful information here, which overcrowds this view. And we would like to see this view actually in multiple aspects based on key MBSC ecosystem use cases and based on the uh, maybe types of the applications. So for that, we created legends. Some of those legends can be automatically extracted. Some of them are manually created. And before we'll switch to the demo, how we work, we can see actually here in the model, what is our uh, modeling style. We try to capture main applications as a parts, right? We have here Katia Magic as a general logical part, and we have a logical game component as a rich client. And then we have specific apps right here. And same here, plugins, like kind of logical, right? And then specific apps, specific plugins as products, right? Commercial products. And then we have, again, Collaboration Studio, which has parts inside. And then uh, those uh, other, even sometimes uh, uh, no-cost plugins are captured here as interfaces because they, are ex they exist, like, for example, Cameo Data Hub, just for integration with requirement management tools. So we don't identify them as a single thing here because uh, uh, they come uh, as part of the bundle in all of those products. Plus, uh, they, um, this Cameo Data Hub uh, is uh, enabler only for the interaction. It's not a standalone thing to have. And uh, plus, it comes as available in the bundle, so you can just take it whenever you need it. So it's not uh, some independently purchased part. Okay, now let's go to the demonstration. And here in, in Cameo, we, we can see here in full screen, we have this model. This model is actually quite uh, large, you know, it gives uh, all those different aspects which we will uh, cover in this presentation. And one of them is here. Let me go full screen. And in full screen mode, we actually also uh, uh, can use legends. So legends are completely enabled. 
So now what we will uh, demonstrate that we can filter by types of the application. So for example, magic, Katia magic, rich client and plugins. So here we have just rich client and plugins. Then we have Katia magic server, just, just server. So you can see simulation, uh, server side simulation is here also. Then we have 3D experience platforms. And we want to add to that uh, also the SOS system apps, which are not part of the platform, as you can see, Rectify, Stimulus, Control Build, and Demola. And then we'll add uh, client side. You see interfaces are immediately displayed, connectors are displayed also, and then we'll add server side. But we'll decide to remove uh, client apps just to see what server side connects to, right? So very, very easy to review. And if you have larger architecture, those legends actually may be one of the key values which uh, MBSC product provides because legends allows you to maintain and to get usefulness from the larger dual models. Now what we will do, we'll actually show different use cases uh, based on the based on the uh, model. So close presenter mode. Let's go back to this uh, mode. And here we have those use cases. So key MBSC adoption use cases, right? Here, key MBSC adoption use cases. And again, legend was applied, so we can review one by one. So product line engineering, let's see what is used for product line engineering. So for product line engineering, if we are using the 3D experience platform, we have product architecture for feature modeling, for uh, effectivity application for all of the design, including requirements, right, for the also uh, application for the uh, uh, configurations and then ability to import them using 3D experience, a novel model definition plugin, which we have no uh, for no cost from Katia Magic. And then we see here that that gets applied. So as you can see, I'm representing this uh, whole architecture, but that would be also convenient to see how that works inside of the flow, workflow, right? Uh, and how to model that workflow. And that's actually very in the uh, very uh, related part of the system model's behavior. So if you take this model, it's very straightforward to say, show me on uh, those uh, parts which participate in this architecture in the activity diagram as swim lanes, and then let's model this workflow, how to use this uh, subset of architecture for the product line engineering. So that we can demonstrate actually in slide uh, later on. And this will be uh, one of the use cases of application. Z then here, what are other use cases? We see here requirements management, so for that, we have TRM and we have stimulus, right? And again, what are interfaces? Stimulus XMI, right? Then we have, what else? Optimization. And for optimization, we have uh, uh, out-of-the-box interface, which connects to the Magic Model Analyst and allows Magic Model Analyst to drag and drop plugin uh, 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 templates. But then also we have um, uh, field solution, which uh, can connect uh, through process composer adapter to the Katia Magic uh, headless simulation and run uh, simulation config in headless mode, but that requires Katia Magic installation. And there is opportunity actually to integrate, uh, again, through the uh, process composer through the custom adapter as a future solution to the REST API for server-side simulation. So you see that we can run server-side simulation uh, Magic Collaboration Studio, and then we will not need uh, rest of the rest of the uh, Katia Magic Rich Client uh, or and the, the uh, sim server-side simulation would run directly on the server without without needing client installation. So, but that's like an opportunity for the future client engagements and the R&D. Then we have also multidisciplinary simulation. So that would be Daimola where we can um, 
you see export uh, using sysfys to the Emola. We can import the Emola libraries model using them and then we have references to, again to export with sysfys for, each uh, for the enrichment in the high fidelity design model link and analysis. And then also we can simulate the Emola through the camera uh, model analyst uh, simulation, which has API for the Emola as a solver. So a lot of integrations with the Emola. And then uh, last but not least, Power BI, where we can see we have Power BI interface uh, out of the box. And this is using uh, collaboration design for Katia Magic SSY. And uh, we can see workflows, we can see, uh, we can do branching uh, and we can uh, do a few other things, but also as a first thing to, to see, we can see in system traceability engineer immediately the content of the model which got committed to, uh, to platform through power by and also we can trace those models uh, even the granularity is this whole system model but we can trace and uh, trace single element level uh, as tier y and tier g supports that okay that was uh, overview of katia magic and the soil mbsc ecosystem here we see Katia Magic based uh, MBSC ecosystem. We have different uh, categories of product, including 3D experience platform integrations. And we can switch to the tool and review that easier in uh, Katia Magic directly. Here we have modeling solutions like uh, uh, Rhapsody, Enterprise Architect, Capella. And as you can see here, there are different colors because uh, there are different, uh, different integration methods used. Uh, sometimes it's a uh, tool vendor who integrates, as we see here, uh, Maple MBC, but uh, there is also sometimes uh, V, sometimes Cinde, Intercax, as you can see, integrates like, uh, for example, here, JAMA currently integrated through that uh, Cinde Intercax, but also uh, there is work done in, uh, on the use cases to integrate um, more directly also, as you can see here, uh, Polarion and uh, uh, here, for example, uh, PLM tools like Team Center is integrated by ACL. And there is also ability to, to actually filter because those legends here in the, in the view allows you to filter. And then you see directly, what, for example, selecting integrator HCL, you have specifically who is uh, what are the integrations provided by that? And again, looking around this PLM tools, PLE, product line engineering, visualization tools, analysis and simulation tools, uh, software, documentation, electrical engineering. Uh, and then there is also integrators, right? So like Cinde, Intercax, Albers, uh, Group, uh, Process Composer by the Systems, uh, then also uh, uh, Rectify from Katia, and uh, inquiry suit and cameo data hub and here we have those same integrators right uh, with the listed uh, also connectors which we provide as you can see here rectify is really rich in connectors like 60 connectors available and also you can see here integration status so we have uh, some of integrations in progress like here we see this one but uh, also uh, most of them are actually already available uh, and in that case we, we don't apply this um, uh, adornment and you can again filter by anything like that you know also there are some uh, some uh, contract in progress uh, uh, integrators and uh, so uh, this this is not official document this is uh, uh, dynamically updated based on the availabilities of new integrations and new products and uh, uh, we uh, try to maintain it as an active uh, solution, which will later be available for a wide audience to, to give a feedback. On. Okay, let's go back to slides. Then uh, we already covered um, KMBSC ecosystem adoption use cases based on the 3D experience platform, the SO applications and Katia Magic integrations. But what we didn't cover that you actually can take this one uh, application uh, case, like for example, product line engineering, and then create uh, activity diagram as you can see here. And let's see how that works again. Let's go out of that. 
here we had this uh, ecosystem so we say okay show me just product line engineering here we have this product line engineering which includes product architect requirements engineer and then katia magic here and then uh, activity diagram which can be created in separate package and separate context which we will cover in the live demonstration how to do it for the client engagement uh, reusing those components with interfaces quite quickly uh, and impressing client with this capability. We, what we can see here is the workflow where we see Katia Magic part and 3D experience and from 3D experience part, part uh, we see here product architect and requirements engineer and from Katia Magic, Magic Collaboration Studio and Magic Rich Client. So that's exactly what was presented there, right? And then here we see that we uh, the workflow is, would be create feature model in the 3D experience platform and product architect, uh, create typical configurations, right? Then uh, at the same time in rich client, we create uh, system architecture and requirements, we create requirements. Then here we split the flow and then we again assign variation points to requirements, variabilities, right? The effectiveness to requirements update feature model and uh, configuration management here and then uh, filter for 100 uh, from 150 to 100 percent requirements so we can actually filter requirements when we have applied variation points but then uh, from that what we can do we can actually import in katia magic feature model and configuration assign variation points to architecture and transform architecture from 100 to 150 and that includes also requirements automatically importing uh, requirements variation points from 3d experience platform we didn't mention that but that would be like showing that use case reusing the data already in the 3d experience platform and uh, as we can see here we define feature model once and we manage multiple design and uh, requirement and architecture artifacts so that was one case of application now let's go back and uh, let's see another case when we have uh, uh, architecture of MBSC electrical wire harness engineering end to end. So, end, -to -end. Uh, so again, let's go here into the model. Here in the model, we have dedicated package, as you can see here for each of those dedicated cases. So for example, here, MBSC E2E end to end uh, use case. And if we go here, so we see that we actually took the architecture, like general architecture of Katia Magic and the saw MBSC ecosystem, created variant inherited with MBSC electrical, and then captured changes. So as you can see here, there are some things which we inherited in 3D experience platform, which are white and which some of them are green. Why is that? Because we have non and created legend where we are non part of uh, architecture. So let's select this and let's filter just to the part of MBSC electrical integration. So you can see here we have uh, we have some uh, here immediately we see that uh, we don't see the name, but we can actually take that and solve that problem with the symbol properties here. Show uh, show uh, the fire like that and then if we will filter we see now name as you can see here what we have we have this architecture where we see that we have systems uh, solution archi architect uh, uh, we have electrical system designer and we see all the interfaces we see you see MD zip going in and out with the from Katia magic uh, uh, magic cyber system engineer or other applications, uh, for example, maybe system of systems architect, magic system of system architect. We have requirements interchange through data hub. We have Excel CSV import in and out uh, between platform. We have FL XML generation of uh, 3D schematics from uh, Katia magic to the system solution architect. And then we have 3D CAD, which is used actually in, uh, in internal uh, connections with the um, electric uh, 3D wire harness and then manufacturing capability but so as you can see here those are integrations those are like flat point of view right but we would care also about behavior side right and behavior side is very convenient to represent uh, in the activity so here we have activity again same approach right can go full screen 
And here in activity, as you can see, there is 3D experience part and there is also um, Katia Magic part, just few apps. Uh, and here is the server side. Again, we need to show the simple properties and also legend system engineering, design and manufacturing. And on top of that, not only that we see what tasks are done by what app based on the previous architecture, like allocation of the function to the uh, structure, right? But also we see with the object flow, what type of data flows and in what interface, right? So that's like a very valuable information, single view, right? Pretty much we can see a whole workflow. So which starts from the capture requirements. So we capture requirements in TRM, then through data hub, we synchronize those requirements with uh, cyber systems engineer. Then we deploy the product uh, project on Teamwork Cloud. We can do also power by uh, in current uh, release, right? Then we have MDZIP X export to system traceability, upload architecture model, then create traceability. Again, this is all part of system engineering work. So we can filter to that. Here we have this system engineering workflow. Uh, and then uh, we can uh, actually see design, right? So create equipment and zones. And uh, you see if those equipment and zones are performed by space allocation app. Then with CSV synchronization, we import actually to Katia Magic, import equipment and zones. We allocate equipment and zones to logical components. We then export through CSV uh, instance equipment in architecture and 2D. And then uh, here we see uh, we create electrical logical architecture, we create electrical connectivity, and then using a FLXML automatically transform to the electric system design uh, to create schematics. What we get from the value perspective, actually, I'm not like talking here, but we can actually see that there is no place for mentor to uh, interrupt the flow. We jumping directly to the schematics so this clear value of direct transformation, right? In one or another way, right? Then we have here created 3D pathways and then synchronize, and then we go to the electrical 3D design. And then here we uh, perform signal routing, splitting signals and uh, production breaks, uh, signals to logical wire harness, connectors, uh, auto assign, uh, disconnect uh, pin uh, reservation, L2P equipment and connectors, cables, wires. And then we go to manufacturing. As you can see, I here don't model the interfaces because we are in single environment as 3D experience platform and such more easy way to work when we have this environment instead of like multiple interfaces, as you can see. So that's where you, you are going uh, all the time, you know, with those integrations getting better is actually automating those interchanges. Like for example, this could be theoretically automated through power by in the future, right? And then we go, go stream uh, line 3D routing and branching, uh, flattering and manipulating harness on uh, form boards and generate uh, form boards definitions. Okay, so that's what we got here. Now let's go back. Uh, and as you can uh, saw, like there's some kind of uh, issues. If you, for example, filter here, you just get that, but you don't see the swim lanes. And uh, that's actually uh, could be easily fixed uh, if you go here to the to the behavior side of this representation. Let's go back here, yeah, electrical wire harness. If you take this whole swim lane and say right click and say uh, right click legend items and say we will want to see that in all the legends and same for this part legend items in all the all the legends and then when I filter here now I see that you see based on the on the filtered uh, capability and uh, maybe even uh, I want to because this legend was also included I want to right click on legend and say uh, actually exclude that from the swim lane put it somewhere here that it would not be removed so some adjustments you see but then at the end of the that we get like working uh, demonstrator for this uh, 
use case with the clear interfaces and uh, uh, ability to communicate um, uh, quickly with the client. Now let's see how that communication can be set up. So here we discuss this uh, specific use case, but now let's say we get new capability and let's talk about existing uh, situation. We are planning to release update for Teamwork Cloud uh, uh, version 2022 release two, and uh, we will update API or CLC API, which will enable uh, ability to integrate with Jira or CLC, but Jira does not have or CLC, right? So we'll need to leverage a, a plugin for Jira, which is commercial plugin from Sodius Willard, provided as a capability to expose Jira, enable Jira to read the Cameo model directly from the server side and uh, get the diagrams uh, ability to link to the Jira tickets, as you can see here. This link established, this was created as a copy of the diagram inside of the Jira through link data, through Teamwork Cloud plus collaborator. So that's kind of direct integration because we don't need a client side, a rich client. But now how to describe this one using this uh, modeling uh, pattern, which we uh, created, you know, pretty much we created pr uh, products, described all the inter interfaces with the ports. So how to leverage that? in any digital engagement with the client. So first of all, we are modeling context and in context, we kind of gather, gathering what we are going to integrate. And then we are showing interfaces and then we connecting in those interfaces. So let's see how to do it. Let's go to the model here. Let's create new package and uh, Teamwork Cloud Jira OSLC 2022. 2XR2 version 2022. So we captured this in the package. Let's then create system context site, or maybe actually, yeah, we can create an element system context. Uh, system context here. So one of the elements uh, for that, I give the name. And then inside we can create internal block diagram, create diagram, internal block diagram to capture that. And you can see here the few style changes. We have big uh, header without any additional things, just a name convenient for this purpose. And now I will start dragging what I need for that uh, use case from this uh, uh, here. So I have like, for example, uh, the source system engineering ecosystem. So here uh, I have no Jira, but Jira is here. So here is Jira, okay. Let's make it smaller. Then I have, uh, I have Katia Magic, I have uh, um, Magic Rich Client. Then I have uh, Magic Collaboration Studio. That's it. And then uh, here as a Jira plugin, I need to use this uh, integrator. So this would be Sodius Willard. Let's find it from here. Here we have this one, right? View. We have here so this wheel right click select and containment tree make sure right click go to select the type here is the type integrations you see integrators package and then go to this place here and then drag this integrator here uh, again let's make it smaller we don't need that size and now let's try to connect them, right? So we see show Jira interfaces, okay, API. And then through Jira API, we can actually select this API and connect directly to Sodius Willard and choose existing API interface, you see. Then take that one, show interfaces, OSLC interface, connect directly to Magic uh, uh, Rich Client, but actually Rich Client connects through Collaboration Studio and uses OSLC interface. And here, let's show interfaces. We have Teamwork Cloud interface for Magic Collaboration Studio. 
And here we can link to that and then show this existing interface. So we just used existing interfaces, as you can see here, showing full integration. Again, this is like a, what interfaces will be used to enable this use case. You saw in the video, like a pre-release video, like quick video showing just how it works. It works seamlessly, but at the back end, we need to enable all those integrations. I mean, like client needs to do it and we can help them demonstrating like this quite quickly, right? And now on top of that, we can actually go here into our package where we created all that information here. And we can create use case diagram. Use case diagram. In that use case diagram, we can take this context and say that in this context, I have actually a couple of use cases and those use cases will be a link uh, system architecture view to Jira ticket. Jira ticket could be, you know, uh, capability, could be bug, could be how you use this uh, uh, change control uh, uh, management software. Then uh, here another one, for example, uh, integrate uh, TVC with Jira using OSLC. Uh, and uh, that would be server side. So that would be the second use case would be for digital engineer, right? Uh, and the first use case would be for the quality assurance engineer, could be also for like a product owner working on new capabilities. Uh, and that would be general, you know, um, role of uh, project uh, product participant right so here we have it and then uh, both of them integrate uh, can uh, get this use case done right and this engineer would do this use case so for the first use case and maybe we'll just concentrate on that one we can take that create activity diagram as you can see here take swim lane create swim lane choose what parts of the integration we want to demonstrate here we have rich client we have server side we have jira we have a, a collaboration component and then we can say here rich client uh, create uh, architecture right uh, then uh, publish it to tvc and uh, collaborator and then uh, this plugin for Jira, so uh, enable install OSLC interface for Jira, or just use it if it is installed. And then here, one, this would call uh, actually an, another use case, right? And then Jira link, uh, ticket to right view in a system architecture. Done. So that's the workflow, very simple one, right? Again, as you remember, into in the previous uh, in the previous uh, uh, model, we were showing also what type of the interfaces we are using here, and we could do the same here because here would be the Teamwork Cloud interface. Here would be, um, and we can do it actually. We can create pin out, uh, pin uh, in, pin uh, out, uh, pin uh, pin uh, in, and here again, pin. Uh, out and here pin in and then instead of those we would leverage this one again right and then uh, we could even synchronize those views actually but uh, let's just take that uh, as a simple case and here we have those interfaces. Here, for example, we have interfaces package. So we have um, architecture to Teamwork Cloud. So this Teamwork Cloud interface, we drag and drop. And let's uh, make the symbol actually properties 
which is normally we do by default, you know, but here somehow we forgot that uh, show uh, show type true, show name false. And you see we have now Teamwork Cloud interface here. Then we can show that uh, public to uh, OSLC. The, so this would be OSLC interface, uh, correct? Uh, then here we would be would be in OSLC to Jira. It would be API, right? It would be Jira API for sure. And uh, we want to drop on this relation here. So we actually now demonstrated where what data is flowing, what interface is used here. And um, that would be primary usage case right here. And this could include actually this use case, you know, that you need to integrate first when you are using this one. And that would extend uh, the scenario here and style interface for Jira, right? Um, uh, and uh, that would be complete uh, story in, in that case. As you can uh, saw, we actually in a few minutes captured this complete API or CLC TVC in what workflow for what tasks we are using them. There's even a location created that we can see here what component is doing what, you know. If we would create a matrix um, here between, uh, between uh, this uh, workflow here uh, where we see like a uh, mode usage right uh, and we would take this um, component here and we would say okay create me uh, a location a location uh, matrix uh, very popular matrix uh, um, maybe just regular matrix Dependency, actually expert mode, uh, and uh, let's see a location, a location, similar location matrix here, and then we say, okay, for the call behavior actions, let's use them from here, and uh, for part properties, let's use them also from here, and then allocate, and then row to column, column to row, refresh. Again, row to column. Let's see what's wrong here. I have all of that. Uh, call behavior action, right? So let's say it will come from here. And those part properties will come from here. Here we have a location. So now we know which tasks, task is performed by which. So create architecture. So Katia Magic, rich client is used to create architecture. Then Jira is used to link ticket to right view in, in system architecture. Then uh, Magic Collaboration Studio is used to publish to the teamwork and collaborator. And then uh, Sodius is used to in install a CLC interface. And maybe we should not to forget, you know, and uh, another one uh, install, but actually not install what we want, but actually link Jira to archi system system architecture in a TVC and collaborator. So here we change that use case. That's the purpose of this plugin, right? And as we will take a look at this allocation. Now we see different uh, different. Uh, link ticket to right view uh, link jira to system architecture in tvc and collaborator is now is now performed uh, and we want to make this here yeah it's now performed by this uh, so this integration plugin and we can show just uh, rows with uh, columns without uh, with relations. We can show just with relations who is participating in this use case, as we can see. So complete point of view created for this specific uh, integration. Let's go back to our slides. So that's how we can apply. As you saw, we just drag and drop from this library you know, of components we linked. You can also show here what is happening in Collaboration Studio. You would think that you would need to create that stuff. 
here but no this is already what we already created so we can just take here uh, and we created that in previous view here uh, you see collaboration studio has this those interfaces for teamwork cloud and then uh, collaborator and uh, rest of that so when we are modeling our use case so we decide show like this or show in this view where we can say display display existing information and show like this it's not only that we access uh, teamwork cloud uh, or still see interfaces actually inside of here provided through teamwork cloud but also cameo collaborator so we need not to forget to mention that we need cameo collaborator for that purpose if client is not clear you know how we get this or still see view you know to the to the jira okay let's go back and here is that workflow which we just created okay and thank you so very much and um, uh, this model again i would love to share in some uh, in one another community this model besides that it includes also um, a few other views like for example structure of all the ecosystem you see quite large and we can filter that structure here in this relation map we have use cases so use cases are already created to every product which we have here internally and externally we have use cases so if you will pick for example product like like for example here collaboration designer for Cartier magic we see configuration management right that's the primary purpose of the power by configuration management and then later it will expand to other use cases but we want to identify the primary purpose of each product which we have here in this whole ecosystem not only internally but also externally with the partners and here a different view of your use cases not being used but just by product and then here is another different view to the use cases when we have in the table each use case may be more convenient sometimes even we have those client engagements where we get like question you know okay list me all the products we integrate to or all the external internal products and what are use cases they are doing and why is this integration so here you go this table can be just exported to excel right to file and you'll get that 